Hi. In the third part of the modulator series, we're going to talk about the second modulator mode called the follower. As the name suggests, it follows the input level change, applying a powerful attack release detector. Therefore, we need to study the detector very well for a successful use of the follower. A short note. To avoid confusion with the next modulator mode, which is the envelope, I'm going to call a local modulating signal a signal level curve or level curve. So, how does the detector work? Well, it reviews the incoming signal and constructs a level curve reflecting the signal level. Most of the detectors have the same standard set of parameters. They are attack and release, and they regulate the detector's reaction. That is, how fast or slow the detector follows a change in the input signal. To demonstrate this, I'm going to use a test signal which I'll create in the M oscillator by applying a step sequencer to modulate the wet controller. Here's how it sounds. Let's have a look at the level graph. The green rectangles represent the test signal. The red diagram is the level curve that the detector builds. It has a rectangle shape too because the attack and release parameters are set at 0 ms. That is, the detector follows the test signal precisely. Now, as I'm increasing the attack, the front of the curve is becoming gently sloping. The detector doesn't react to the signal as it did before. It misses the sharp front of it and reaches the maximum only in some time. A similar thing will happen if I enlarge the release parameter. As you can see, the detector doesn't go down to its original level at the bottom straight after the test signal's ending. You may be wondering why we need the attack and release anyway. First of all, they give us many creative possibilities. Let me demonstrate that. Here is a very basic drum loop. And now it goes through the M-Comb plug-in with a filter frequency modulated by the follower. As you can hear, changing the attack and release parameters distinctly influences the sound. However, it's important to understand that these parameters themselves don't influence the sound directly. They define only the filter's behaviour. For instance, if I employ a resonance filter like the M filter, the result will be completely different. What those parameters do is modify a modulation much as the custom shape or step sequencer do in the normal mode. The next two controllers are the peak hold and RMS. The first one holds an envelope on its maximum. For example, when I'm increasing it, you can see that the tops of the red curve are becoming flat. It means after reaching its maximum, the modulating signal will stay there for some time before going down. Commonly, we find its use in a gate or a compressor. Yet, you'll never know what you'll need next time you tune the follower. The RMS smooths out the signal before that arrives and the detector's input. Useful function if you don't want the detector to react to every spike in the signal. However, large settings may even out the signal so strongly that it can become ineffectively slow. The pitch modulation introduces a modulation signal from the pitch modulator. Helpful if an input signal is dynamically poor, for instance, a solo synth playing legato, but you still want the follower to react to a note change. We'll discuss the pitch modulator in more detail in one of the following parts of this series. For now, just note that you have such a possibility. The transient modulation lets you mix an envelope extracted from a signal's transients level or pitch to the modulating signal. This way you can make the follower react to the transients in the signal instead of its level.
The projection puts the detector's level curve into the normal modulator's signal. The effect it produces is hard to specify, so just try it and see if it works for you. The outcome can be very unusual and unexpected. As an alternative, you can try the LFO modulation. It bends modulating signals from the follower and the normal modulator. Now, when we've got a good understanding of the detector's parameters, let's learn how to tune them properly. And there's no better tool for this job than the level graph. We've already worked with it a bit, and now it's time to have a closer look. First thing to notice is an input signal, green. It's shown as a rectified waveform instead of a classic view we find in audio editors. This presentation is much more useful for judging a signal's level, and the level is all what we care about here. The red line represents the detector's envelope, the level curve that the detector builds based on its parameters. Getting it right is your first task. The second curve, white, which I didn't show before, is the modulating signal itself. Its shape is defined by the form of the level curve, plus by these two handles, the level max and level min. In turn, they directly relate to the value and maximum value we see in the parameters panel. Now, how to tune that system? Actually, it's quite easy. I'm going to use a repeating test signal again. Here it is. The detector is generating the envelope. Everything is as it should be. The level max and the level min handles determines a range in which the envelope swings up and down. If the envelope utilizes the exact space between the handles, then the modulation will be 100%. Correspondingly, if the envelope uses only a part of it, then the modulation will be under 100%. On the other hand, if the envelope goes out of that range, the modulation signal will be clipped. Look at the modulating signal's amplitude. The reason why it's so low is because the envelope doesn't reach the level max parameter. Now, watch closely the modulating signal as I'm moving the handle down. Its amplitude is growing. And when the handle's level and highest value of the envelope coincide, the modulation reaches 100%. OK, what if I move the level max further down? As you can see, the modulator's tops go flat, that is, clipped. The same logic is applied to the level min handle. The only difference is, instead of the highest level curve's value, we consider the lowest one. Here's another real-life example. This time, it's a full mix. As you can see, the envelope's range is much smaller than the one from the previous example. It's because the mix is stuffed with many parts, so the envelope has no room to go down to the quiet parts. Anyway, I want the modulation to be 100% or close. So what I need to do is set the level min handle to the curve's low values and the level max to the high ones, like this. Now, I see that I've got 100% modulation and I can concentrate on the parameters panel. Well, we've got a pretty good idea about the follower. Now, let's apply our knowledge to build something simple. Auto wah wah effect, for example. As you know, a real wah wah pedal is controlled by a guitarist during playing. In our case, however, it's going to be an input signal which will drive a plug in. To build a wah wah effect, we need a bandpass filter. There are several plugins from Melder Productions range that we can use here. I choose M Filter. Here it is. Next, select a band pass filter. After that, appoint a modulator to it. I set approximately 200 hertz to 2 kilohertz range. Now, here's a guitar part I'm going to use as a source. I want to make it a bit funkier. Let's open the follower. First, I set the level min and level max handles roughly here. OK, 
Okay, my filter is swinging as expected, but its reaction to the signal is too fast. No guitarist can track a signal as accurately as this filter. Somehow, I need to make the filter's behaviour slower. We know that the first parameters responsible for the filter's reaction are the attack and release in the detectors section. Now, it sounds like a wah-wah effect. Perhaps if I tweak the filter's Q parameter, I'll improve the effect even further. Yes, like this. More ideas? Well, I can blend a slow noise modulation from the normal modulator to emulate a human error. I think this is about as far as we can go with the auto wah-wah effect, and it wasn't hard at all as you can see. How about building something more complicated? Dynamic noise reduction perhaps, the one that cuts a high frequency hiss at quiet places. Sounds good to me. To build it, we need a plugin which possesses a low pass filter, modulator and multi-parameters. It could be the M filter, M band pass or M auto dynamic EQ. I'll pick up the last one. You can grab any of these three as they all satisfy our criteria. Here's my goal. I need to teach the plugin to open its low pass filter only when high frequency components are present in a signal. The tricky part is how to make its detector respond to a high frequency content only. To implement this, I'm going to use one of the detector's features we haven't talked about yet. This is the side chain equalizer. Its purpose is to shape a frequency response of the signal before it gets to the detector. To reach it, open the advanced detector settings window. It's on the right side, turn it on. Now we'll construct a waiting filter. We know that low frequency signals are usually much higher in energy than high frequency ones. Look at your multiband speaker if you need proof. Therefore, the waiting filter must even out that disbalance. Its frequency response is totally up to you, but as a reference point, you can start from plus 3 dB oct slope. I'm going to employ a low and high shelf filters to build it, like that. All right, the detector is ready. I just need to appoint the follower to a low pass filter and I'm ready to fight the noise. There are several options in the M auto dynamic EQ when it comes to filters. You can try 6 or 12 dB oct filter. Using a filter with the higher order can lead to an unwanted coloration of the sound. I choose 6 dB oct and I set it moves from 1 kHz to 20 kHz. I'm going to use an audio recorded on a film set. <clears throat> so, why do you think I should be with you? As you can hear, there is a high hiss in this take. The first thing I'm going to do is set up the level min max parameters. To achieve this, I loop a part with the noise only in there, this one. Next, I go to the level panel. Here's the noise level. You remember that level min and max parameters correspond to 1 and 20 kilohertz. I want the filter to be closed, i.e. be at 1 kilohertz during noisy parts. In that case, I must set the level min just above the noise level. And vice versa, I want the filter to be opened, i.e. be at 20 kilohertz when the useful signal is present. For that to be done, I set the level max higher than the level min, but not as high as the top values of the signal's envelope. Because if I set it there, the filter will start modulating the signal, and I don't want that. I want it to be constantly open for as long as the useful signal is present. Thus, the final position is going to be somewhere between the level min and the maximum so, of the envelope. Just use your ears. I'll leave it here for now. I should be with you. Now, it's time to review the detector's settings. Is the attack time fast enough? Can you hear the noise decaying at the ends of the words? Like now, for example. <clears throat> so, why do you think? If so, check the release time. Maybe it's too long. 
Is applying the whole parameter a good idea? Don't forget the side chain equaliser. Maybe plus 6 dB ox slope works better. How about the peak filter? Do you need the weighting filter at all if you are processing a bass guitar? Seems like too many questions. However, you need to answer them just once. After that, all the hard work becomes a preset. Here is what I ended up with. <clears throat> so, why do you think I should be with you? <clears throat> so, why do you think I should be with you? Not too bad, I think. That's all for the follower. Happy modulating.